This system here is the clutchless adapter. Uh, I just got this back from the machinist, Levine Machine and Engineering, down in Burnsville, Minnesota. They're at levine.com, L-A-V-E-E-N.com. Uh, Eric Levine helped design this adapter plate to mount the motor to the transmission. It's a one inch thick piece of aluminum. The hole cut through the middle and four mounting holes. It's in the shape of the transmission's bell housing because eventually that transmission is going to rest on top of it. So the motor had a little alignment flange right here and the plate that we built matches that flange. This coupler connects the output shaft of the motor to the input shaft of the transmission. It does that by essentially creating a modified flywheel. I took off the friction surface so I was just left with this uh, spring based system with the splined uh, female part that slides over the shaft of the transmission. These springs, we wanted to keep this system because it allows for some shock absorption uh, if, in case of any impact from the motor when it engages uh, with that transmission. So basically we needed a way to connect this spring uh, spring based clutch disc needed a way to connect this to the motor and the transmission at the same time and the way you do that is with this coupler this coupler has four holes in it and those, those four holes match up with four holes that used to be uh, pins that held these plates at a specific distance apart. Well, they still pr provide that function, but instead of just being pins, now they actually have holes that go all the way through. So, notice the quick recess areas that happen there to accommodate the protrusion of these springs. Those springs rest in those notches to provide clearance but now I can take this bolt and mount the clutch disc to the coupler. And when you do that, now this can turn as an assembly. Even though this can turn as an assembly, there's still no real way that we've connected it to the motor. Uh, this can plug into the transmission, but there's no way to attach it to the motor without the use of this taper lock hub right here. Now some people pay to have this machined uh, with a tapered surface and machining the threads out. Uh, I'll post some information on how this thing works, but basically what happens is when you tighten these screws, the some inclined planes inside this collar push outward and push inward. The outward pressure pushes against the surface of this flywheel, and the inward pressure pushes against the shaft of the motor so that when this uh, taper lock hub is attached to this coupler when you screw this down it binds the coupler to the motor shaft. Uh, this coupler was about $25 from a company called B-Lock. Uh, it's supposed to transmit over 300 pounds, uh, foot-pounds of torque so that should be plenty so now that taper lock uh, hub or bushing is inside of the coupler, 
I've tightened down a couple of these bolts just a little bit so that it would bind against the hub here to act kind of as one piece so that when I put it on the shaft it all kind of stays together. You can see it's a pretty tight fit the top of the motor shaft flush with that coupler. If I go too far down if I go too far down it's going to inter it's going to interfere with this plate or the face of the motor so I need to lift it up a little bit and then tighten it down. One other little thing is that this inner ring here is a pilot bushing that allows the tip of this transmission shaft to line up with that uh, rather than just relying on the splines to do all the alignment. So that will help keep that shaft centered uh, on the motor shaft. So now I'm just going to go around and one by one, a quarter turn at a time, tighten down these screws. Now that the coupler is tied to the motor shaft, now I just have to insert the cannibalized clutch disc as a way to connect that motion to the transmission. For this test I'm just going to use two bolts without washers or anything. Now this whole thing turns with the motor and I'm just going to slip the transmission over the top, put the input shaft down through there and then when the motor turns the transmission will turn. There. Now I'm going to hook up some connections to the motor, plug it into a 12 volt battery, and see if this shaft turns. Okay, this is the first official test of the motor, I'm trying to see if it will turn this shaft on the transmission. This is the output shaft that goes to the axle. 18 volts and lots of amps so I'm burning up my 10 gauge wire very quickly <laughs> and here we go safety first and as you can see it turned um, and the wire melted in my hand <laughs> so there's a lot of amps going through those batteries and I need to get heavier gauge cable but it looks like it's gonna work now we'll just have to wait and see if it works that 4,000 RPMs when it's in the car.